Hello and welcome to my Invested Engine Stocks and Shares ISA update for February 2024. In this video, as always, I'll start off by having a quick look at how the markets have been doing. It's been another great month to be an investor. After that, I'll go through my main factor based portfolio and show you how it's been doing before quickly going over the Invested Engine managed portfolio that I share and make sure to stay to the end as I'll discuss my thoughts on the overall portfolio going forward and a possible introduction of a new ETF. I share my portfolio to be fully transparent and also because I think it's nice to see how others are doing and it's a good source of motivation for us all as investors and helps establish a bit of a community. If you enjoy these videos, please consider leaving a like. It's greatly appreciated and really helps the channel. The comments are what really keeps me motivated. So let me know what you think below and I'd love to hear how your portfolios are doing as well. Remember these videos are not financial advice or a recommendation of what to invest in. When investing your capital is at risk and you may get back less than what you put in. So looking at the markets, I'll start off with the S&P 500, which with the US market making up about 63% of the global stock market, is one of the strongest drivers of global returns. And yet again, it's been another great month for the S&P 500, up 3.98%. And on the five year chart, we can see it is up an incredible 81.5% and it is well and truly at all time highs again. Looking at the performance of the seven tech companies that dominate the S&P 500, we can see that they've all had a good month apart from Apple and Alphabet, which are down 6% and 5% respectively. But overall, it's clear that these companies are continuing to drive the returns of the market. I've heard a few people saying that Nvidia is carrying the entire stock market, and whilst it certainly deliver quarter after quarter of ridiculously good earnings, and it is up nearly another 28%, I think that is oversimplifying the situation. Amazon and Meta have also delivered exceptional returns over this past month, and some great earnings too. Turning to Nvidia though, we can't ignore the situation, and I remember back when the PE of this stock was around 200, and we were all thinking that surely the AI euphoria had to end and it was a bit overvalued at least but it just continues to justify itself. And looking on Stockopedia now, we can see that the forward PE ratio is only at 32.2, which isn't too unusual for any tech company nowadays. And just to quickly show the financial summary, I do think it's crazy to see these numbers written down. If we go back to 2019, Nvidia had a revenue of 11.7 billion and a net profit of 4.1 billion. And now it has estimates of a $130 billion of revenue in 2026, a net profit of 71.5 billion. That is just ridiculous growth for what was already a large cap stock. Moving over to the UK market, as always there's no comparison really, as the UK only makes about 3.5% of the global stock market. That being said, as this is a UK channel, it is interesting to see how UK stocks are doing, and we can see that the FTSE 100 is up by 2.34%, and the 250 actually slightly down by 0.23%. And on the 5 year chart, they are up by 8.44%, and down by 1.13% respectively. No further comment to be made here, it's pretty stagnant. I personally believe with the UK market, there is actually somewhat of a stronger case for stock picking if you're into that, because the FTSE 100 is just full of companies that mostly don't seem to be going anywhere, and if you buy a FTSE 100 ETF, then you're investing in them indirectly whether you like it or not. In my opinion, it is a market that may particularly benefit from applying a factor filter as well. And that is why I was excited when the Wisdom Tree UK Quality Dividend Growth ETF was released. I've mentioned it a few times and I'll continue to mention it because I think it's a great ETF and I will do a dedicated video on it at some point. I could talk about how we entered a technical recession or how CPI is still at 4%, but I think we're all sick of hearing about that, so I'll skip discussing that in this video. Finally, a quick look at the Japanese market. And remember, Japan is the second largest component of an all-world index at 5.62%, so it is important to your return if you're a global stock investor. The Topics is continuing to perform well, with it being up another 6.53% over the past month, and on the 5 year chart, the Topics is up nearly 65%. So great results, but remember as I said in my last update, we've not actually seen much of these results ourselves as UK investors, as the weakening yen counteracts a lot of these returns. Anyway, that is a roundup, and moving on to my portfolio update, my main portfolio now stands at a balance of £18,459.78, and that is up from January's end balance of £17,080.80. Another great increase, which is of course partly due to further contributions, but actually in this case mainly due to just some exceptional returns this month. Jumping into the portfolio page on Invest Engine, we can see on the maximum performance chart, I am now up £2,297, or 17.54%, and this is a big increase in returns from last month. So of course, I'm very happy with how the portfolio is performing. 
It was started on the 19th of April last year when I transferred my ISA over from Hargreaves Lansdowne and I have changed my ETF choices a couple of times but I've been with this factor investing portfolio since November. To see how the portfolio has performed this month I can switch to the one month chart and that shows just over one month alone I'm up by £749.24 or 4.34%. We can't really expect every month to be like this, but it just goes to show why it is important to remain invested. If you're out of the market when these good months happen, there's no going back and a lot of the returns have been missed. Yes, you'll have the bad months as well, but the history of the stock market tells us there has always been more good than bad overall. In terms of new contributions, we can see them via the black dots on this chart. The first black dot is actually not new, and I went through that in last month's update, it's just not quite gone off the screen yet, but the £500 contribution on the 29th of January is new, and that's my regular monthly contribution. Going forward, £500 is my target contribution each month, because that is what's affordable to me alongside other things I have going on in life at the moment. And this last black dot is kind of a new contribution, but not really. It's me moving the money over from my AI ETF into this portfolio. I thought it was a bit silly having £100 in an AI ETF and covering it every month. I had no plans on adding to it because I'm not the biggest fan of thematic ETFs, so I thought it'd be best to sell it, realise the profits, and move the cash into the main portfolio. So overall, there's been £611 deposited or moved into this factor investing portfolio. I'll now scroll down to the holdings so we can see how they've all individually performed over the past month, and you can see it is green across the board, but with some significant variation as to how much movement there has been. The Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth ETF has performed decently well, with it being up by 3.78% or £244.09. And then we have the X Track of Factor Funds, all up as well, with Momentum having another month as the best performer, being up a massive 8.62% or £221.42. Next up, the X Track of Quality ETF is up by 5.87% which is more than the Wisdom Tree Quality ETF, and this is again most likely due to XDEQ giving a greater weighting to NVIDIA. I think this is a reminder as to why I decided to invest in both of these quality factor funds. They both have different ways of including and weighting stocks, and if I went with one over the other, I'd be constantly tempted to switch based on the performance of one of them, as is the case here. Over the long term, they'll most likely take it in turns as to which performs better month to month or year to year. And the final X Tracker Factor Fund here is the Value one, and that is the worst performer, but still up by 2.14%. Value has been out of favour for a very long time now, and I do think this is the one that will be the hardest to keep in my portfolio if it continues to underperform. However, I am happy to have some allocation to it, because it does negatively correlate to momentum, and thus should help my portfolio in some other periods when momentum does poorly. Scrolling down, the iShares S&P 600 small cap is slightly up by 0.65%, and as I've stated a few times, this is one I've included because it is trading way below its historic average PE ratio, and I'm banking on the fact that I think interest rates will start coming down in the next year or so, which should lead to some good performance for small caps. Finally, Emerging Markets has finally had a good month, with it being up by 4.36%, or £73.23. It's nice to see emerging markets finally having a good month, but who knows if this trend will last. Emerging markets has been underwhelming for a long time now. I did recently send out an email about an India ETF that I find interesting, because Indian stocks have actually performed very well. It is the Chinese stock component of the EMIM ETF that is dragging those returns down. Anyway, that's the one month performance of all these ETFs, but I'll now switch to the maximum view and put them all on screen now. As I always say, because I switched to these ETFs on the 2nd of November, this is the performance of these positions since then. The rest of my returns in the total figure are from the previous ETFs I held and the realised gains. I won't read out all these positions, but feel free to pause. It's really interesting to me to see how all the factors are performing, and momentum is clearly the big winner here, mainly being driven by the likes of Nvidia, Meta and Amazon. But I'm very happy with how this portfolio is doing across the board. That's my main portfolio, but I'll now quickly run through the Invest Engine Managed portfolio that I started in November. There is only one contribution of £100 in here, and I'll not contribute further to it because I'm a DIY investor, and this portfolio was created purely out of interest to see how Invest Engine picks ETFs and to see how it performs, and because I thought it would be interesting to share with you all. So we can see on the maximum chart it is up by 13.2%, which is a great performance to see, and on the one month chart it is up by 4%, so that is slightly behind my main portfolio, but overall extremely similar. Scrolling down to the holdings, this is a long list, but starting from the top we have an S&P 500 ETF, 
an emerging markets ETF, and an EMU ETF, which is basically investing in Eurozone stocks. It's worth noting that the S&P 500 and EMU ETFs that InvestEngine have selected here are GBP hedged, which basically means they will perform better than the standard version when the pound gets stronger, but worse when the pound gets weaker. I personally do not bother with hedging in my portfolio, but it can help sometimes and I do understand the logic here. Next up are factor funds and I do like the fact that InvestEngine incorporate them. They've gone for an equal weighting to all five factors, momentum, quality, small cap, value and minimum volatility. And then finally at the bottom we have a standard FTSE 100 ETF and a UK GILTS ETF. I do find the bond allocation a bit pointless here. 1.8% in bonds, you might as well not bother because that's going to have no impact on the portfolio in terms of returns or diversification. Overall though, I don't think there is much to criticise here with invest engine selection and I do like their approach of mixing core market cap weighted ETFs with factors on the side. I'm pretty confident that long term users of the managed service will not be disappointed based on this. I'll switch to the maximum view now and just slowly scroll through the holdings so you can see the performance overall since the portfolio was started on the 2nd of November. The standout performers are the S&P 500, the Momentum Factor ETF and the EMU ETF. Just like with my factor portfolio, everything is in the green and I think that highlights that we're in a pretty good period for the market at the moment where it's a great time to be an investor. Before going over my future plans for this portfolio, if you're interested in starting your own investing journey or like the look of Invest Engine and want to transfer your ISA over to here, I do have a link in the description that will give you a bonus of up to £50 if you sign up via it and invest £100 yourself. Invest Engine is currently my favourite ETF investment platform due to its low to zero fees and over 600 ETFs to choose from. It has a range of handy features such as analytics, easy portfolio rebalancing and fractional shares which just makes it overall super easy to use and a smooth experience. A big thank you to anyone who does sign up via that link and as always terms and conditions apply and remember when investing your capital is at risk. So the portfolio is growing very nicely and to get my total portfolio balance I just need to add the DIY and managed portfolio numbers together and that gives me the figure of £18,572.95. I do just want to briefly discuss my plan for the portfolio going forward. I'm still waiting and hoping UC99, the MSCI USA Quality Factor ETF, will be added to Invest Engine. As you know, I'm a big fan of that ETF, and I have been thinking about how I will integrate it into my portfolio if and when it is added to Invest Engine. I think what I'll decide to do is integrate it into the main portfolio rather than creating a separate tab. As I discussed in my recent factor investing with one ETF video, quality is the most consistent factor and for that reason I like the idea of giving quality the greatest weighting. So with that in mind, one way of integrating UC99 that I'm considering is to have my total quality weighting up from the 50% it currently is to 60% across GGRG at 35%, XDEQ at 15% and UC99 at 10%. I'll still prioritise the global quality ETFs with a slight US tilt via UC99 as I just find it to be an exceptional ETF and a great way of investing in the US market over the long term. You may think why have quality split across three ETFs as I could just use one of these global quality ETFs and that be it. Well my reasoning is I enjoy investing, I enjoy seeing how individual ETFs are performing and I understand how these three quality ETFs are all slightly different in their approach. For those who don't want to think about their portfolio or don't really care about multiple positions then having one ETF would make complete sense. As long as it does not undermine returns I don't see any harm in splitting the weighting between a few ETFs. The only time including lots of ETFs is a problem is when people just starting adding lots of different funds randomly without understanding how they all work differently or overlap. An overlap is not necessarily a problem as long as you understand it is there and are happy with the impact it has on the weightings in your portfolio. One of my video ideas that I'll be making soon will address this topic and look at the idea of creating a reliable yet interesting long term portfolio using the concept of core and satellite positions. And basically how I see that in my portfolio or what I've been transitioning into over the past year is having quality as the core with the greatest weighting and then other factors that are less consistent and in my individual stock portfolio as satellite positions. 
So I've tried to visualize that on screen now. I do have some work to do regarding the exact weightings, and I definitely want to reduce my individual UK stocks as a percentage of the total portfolio. Overall, I think the key thing I want to make clear though, is that I'm not making any significant changes to the ETFs I have. I don't want to do much tinkering because I'm happy with this portfolio, and I do think it is pretty well reasoned. It's just a matter of adjusting weightings and mentally categorizing ETFs in my head as core or satellite. And of course, the only reason UC99 was not included in the main portfolio originally is because it's simply not available on Invest Engine. I'll continue pestering them to add it as it's one of my favorite ETFs out there, and I'd love to have it as a constituent of my core portfolio. That is it for this one. If you enjoy learning about exciting ETFs and want to gain access to my ETF cheat sheet to help you find the best ETFs, you can sign up to my newsletter via the link in the description. I try to keep the email short and informative, so I promise not to bore you, and you'll also be the first to hear about any free shares or special offers I'm able to offer. And if you're looking for something else to watch, you might want to check out this video where I apply a quality and momentum screen to the UK market in order to find some of the best UK quality dividend growth stocks. As always, thank you for watching.